Uh, transferred to uh, UNC Wilmington, played for Kevin Easton and Jerry Wainwright, two good coaches. Went into college coaching, uh, right out of college, wasn't good enough to play receives yet, but I started for Wilmington, so you know, I was a good player. I got eight points from the league my senior year, Coach Champ told me. And I went into college coaching uh, at Hanna University, got a master's there, coached at Belmont Abbey for two years, Division II, and got the job at Coastal Carolina with a guy named Pete Strickland from the DMV area, and coached at Coastal Carolina for two years. So I, I was a college coach for about five and a half years. I learned how to be a college coach. I got all my reps at Five Star Basketball Camp. I don't know if you guys remember Five Star Basketball Camp, but there's not many great camps out there anymore except Phenom. Right? I'm going to work with Coach Joe Keller in uh, uh, LA in, in August. But, you know, I got my reps at, at 18 years old, so I'm almost 51 now. I'll be 51 in August. Right? So write this down. If you struggle at coaching and connecting, you're going to get more reps. Your repetitions will get you your reputation. And you can fill in the blank with any values you want. I'm just talking about how I communicate. Your biggest weapon as a coach is not your drills, it's your words. Your words create a player's world to learn how to communicate. I used to stutter when I was younger. They called me Pete for repeat because I said everything twice. You can laugh, man. I guess I, I stand for yeah. First time I was with Kobe, right? We're going to catch my brother. I was like, no, no, no. What do you do? You're a coach. So what does that mean? I'm a older young man in money. 
molder of young men and women. Awesome. That's great. I was thinking, I was thought you could say something stupid. That was very good. <laughs> I'm going to break that down even more. I'm not joking. I'm going to keep your attention. You know what I mean? When somebody asks me, hey, what do you do? I teach people how to win in life. I teach them how to win in basketball. Like, coaches teach them how to win. I don't teach them drills. Write this down. You want the right answers, you've got to ask the right questions. You ask a great question, you're going to get an answer. If I were you, I'd use this whole weekend to get solutions. Not hearing stories. Respectfully use that for the other stuff. But when you're in class, hey, yo, I got a kid that's not confident. Cool, I got five solutions. And I'll mail them to you. Man, I got a kid that don't know how to play the game. Oh, you done? All right, well, number two, you got to be confident. And you're a leader, you got to be confident. If you disagree with me today, no lie, raise your hand and say, Coach, I think you're off. Say that. I want us to metaphorically fight. When you're a white boy growing up in the hood, guess what? You'll get into some fights. I played at Duquesne University. You never forget, a guy named Ephraim Whitehead, Derek Austin. They were my roommates. New Year's Eve, I'm in the cast. Right, I couldn't go home. Coach Carroll was a jerk. He would let me home. That's why he got fired by the Celtics, man. <laughs> Kidding, man. Again, I joke about it. So I'm a freshman, man. I got zits all over my face. I'm in my dorm. I go to sleep at night. I got a cast on. I, I wouldn't drink or a party or... You know what I mean? I'm in my bed, and Derek and, and Ephraim come throw water on me. I never forget to throw water on me. And it start hit me with a pillow. And I just grabbed Ephraim and had him in a headlock like John Cena. And I, I thank God Derek you know, got me off of him because I could have killed him. Man. I got bullied. I got hate. Alan Watkins, he smoked weed and ate pizza. And he was around now and rebounding. He was a prop 48, played a Roman Catholic. The, the year that I played, I'm like, oh, we played you basketball. We played on the floor. Coach said, you can't eat pizza. What are you doing? I shut the fuck up. Like, what's up? And we would fight. We'd physically fight. And I'm trying to beat Temple, and he just wants to get fed and high. I'm like, I would tell him that. Is it bad leadership? Yeah, it was violent leadership. It was authoritative leadership. You know all those fancy words, Tyler. You can explain what I'm talking about. <laughs> Have impact leader. I had to say it in a different way. But I was 19 back then, full of pistol, man. And so I started coaching that way. But my point is, I never lost my fight. And if you guys want to be confident, you got to give these kids real solutions on how to win in basketball, how to win in life. you got to be confident to, enough to, you know what? The third C is charisma. You want to break their habits, you don't want to break their heart. Young A, you coaches out there that are coaching from fear and from anger because they don't understand the kids. And they don't really understand how to coach, because it's a no-barrier entry industry in the grassroots. You won't be a real coach. Try to get an NCAA job. An institution that puts a little heat and accountability to you, whether it's productivity, money. I was a college coach, but I learned how to do a scout report and break down film and teach the right way. Not, not my way, but whatever Coach Strickland, Coach Samuels, Coach Demetrius wanted me to teach. you got to be unbelievably clear, competent, and charismatic. You can't break their heart, but you got to break their habits. And the fourth C is conviction. Y'all want your players to be hard, but I'm walking, I've been to 51 countries. I mean, not in one corner of the gym teaching eighth and ninth graders, and this other AAU coach is coaching a very elite team, and the dude's walking around like this with a hat on and flip flops. And he's got, he's, I mean, he's got no tone, he's got no sound, no conviction. He's not on, he's not demanding. But you got to coach with energy. Like, write this down. Nothing great happens without a sound. You want your players to talk, but I don't feel the weight behind your words. Speak into players. It's your body language. It's your tone. It's your mannerisms. It's not, hey, hey, girl. Right? Charisma. Conviction. And then once you got those four or whatever your coaching toolbox is, be consistent. Because once the players trust you, they got to know what you're real. Oh, this is what he, he expects. The great ones I've had, they see every NBA player ever worked out. Don't be a big player. Hey, what's the highest in this drill, coach? Mm -hmm. Hey, who got the highest? Right? Stat, we do, we do a little hook drill with stats. Stats look at it like, well, who got the highest? When you work out an elite player and they lose a game or they mess up a drill, hey, yo, yo, coach, let's play again. Coach, I ain't leaving. You, you, you talk to Coach Handy. He got a nightlife going on, right? And he's sitting there working Kobe out. Kobe won't leave that spot for like 50, 50 60 minutes because he wants to get it right. When I was with Kobe, he was like, man, I, in workouts, I chase perfection. I'm trying to do it right. 
That's the great thing about elite players. They're very simple. They're extraordinary in simplicity. They do simple things well at an extraordinary level over and over and over. They don't get bored with process. Right? I work, actually worked out with Ray Allen, and he's working out like he's training for the Miami Heat again. I'm like, okay, that's why he's good. Again, what Ray Allen said, winning changes your life. Winning changes your community. So teach these kids how to win. So that's basically, you know, good tweet, five C's. Well, what does that mean? All right, here's what it means. Teach them how to win in basketball, win in life. That's what we do. We do it through physical solutions. We do it through mental solutions. If you're a real coach, unless you're a specialist. I guarantee Coach Wild, he's a shooting coach. He's teaching life, too. Guarantee he's teaching culture. It's part of it. I'm not teaching products. I'm not doing a workout so you can buy this product. I'm, doing, I'm using the product to help your physical skills. But then we're going to have mental solutions. Do you know how to teach a player to emotionally transfer? Right? You love the game? Yeah, we'll show it. Do you love your teammates? Yeah, we'll show it. And then if you really want to help them out, they need peace. They need a plan. They need a premonition. They need power. Passion. Where do you get that? Their life source. Well, I believe in Buddha. We'll go to him. In Jesus support us. I mean... I'm not here to teach religion. I'm here to have a relationship with God. For me, it's Jesus Christ and God Almighty. And if I'm wrong, we're all going to hell anyway, so you know what? I'm bad on you. Church is five minutes away. I mean, be right now, again, yeah, that's not disrespect that, but I mean, that, that's what I believe. That's what I try to live my life. And so kids need peace. Kids need a plan. So as a coach, right, at $20, what are the three areas on offense we teach? In the most simplistic way you can, you, you, the 30 second elevator pitch. Right? Hey, all right, you teach how to win in basketball. How do you do that? On offense, what do you teach? Dribble, pass, and shoot. We call those basics. You get a dollar. You see what I'm saying? I'm laying that bamboo root. Like, if you can get the foundation and the root right and concepts of Phil calls it universal truths, that's what you teach. You teach basics. So yeah, passing, catching, footwork, finishing, shooting. And then once you get, you know, once you get reps at that, what's your game plan? You're teaching them what? Feel handy stuff. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what do we call that? Huh? That you have said that. What's number two? Five seconds. Come on. I'm a big time agent. You're going to train Bam out of bio. All right, what are you going to show them? Write this down. I got this from our guy Phil Beckner. Two ways to get to the next level. A high level of intelligence, which is, all right, you know it, but can you deliver it under pressure? He woke me up in the middle of the night, I'm fighting. I might lose, but I'm, you won't get some scars. When, when you first saw me today, you did that, and I was, I was ready to do that, but I was like, that's my hand too. <laughs> you, know, you sneak in me. I've been snuck enough in the hood. Look, coaching is confrontation. Coaching is criticism. Criticism is the highest form of coaching. But you do it in a way that has charisma, right? So anyway, I'm getting, what, what's, what's after basics, guys? Help them out. What does that mean? The concepts is just a generic term. What, thank you for thank you, thanks for participating. You're coming to Florida, we want to have some fun, get some shrimp, we're gonna play some ones. I have a mentorship in Florida that I do this with coaches. What's after? what to do with the ball or what to do with the ball? you're right, that's not clear. Moves and counters! That's what you teach off if you're teaching moves and counters. So that's what you go study on YouTube when you watch film like that's that, that's, you're, you're setting a plan. So, I'm kidding about that. So, there's five areas in the game where, hey, what are you going to show Luka Doncic? Well, I, I've noticed that in the game, his reads off what? What do you get reads off of in the game? Who said that? There you go. I'm going to give you 20 to name off five. You have, write this down, guys. You can have a moving account off the screen. Well, that's the type, that's, that's micro, that's micro. All right, then you got all the screen, the step ups, you got flips and wiggles and grumble drags and Spain L screen and all that NBA stuff. It's another language. Guys want to get the NBA. Good. Learn the language. Ask them that. I want to go to the NBA. Don't even work them out for a week. Say, yo, this is what you got to learn the NBA. You got to learn the language. You got to learn how to do it to learn, pick stuff up. And that's just the middle. Get the emotional. No boys allowed. So, hey, I love you, pumpkin, but I'm not going to cater to you. You want to go to the NBA? Let's go. Right? They cry. I wipe their tears. I got you. My job out of the grassroots is to be patient, to be tolerant, to be graceful. Now, at their level, like, you can't play? Yeah, go to Iceland. You can't play in this league. <laughs> I'm playing in Iceland. 
I'm happy to go to high school instead of do birthday parties. Come on, man, come on, let's go. I gave you some time. Off the screen. That's off the screen. Like, that's one part of movement. What else? Is, what if they're switching? So, now we're throwing stuff on the wall. One at a time. And y'all get mad at your team because they're not organized. Raise your hand, please. Or stand up and have a sound. Who wants to ask you next? Primary moves. Oh, the primary moves. Okay, what, what is that? What's your go-to? That's what I said. Move, that's a moving encounter. You can't define a word with the same definition of the word. What's a moving encounter? Give me an example. Screen. You need a moving encounter off the screen. You need a moving encounter off the cut. Uh, you need a moving encounter off the finish. One foot, two foot. You need a moving encounter off the bounce. Off the bounce. Learn the language. Not wrong. You, in your curriculum, off the dribble. No problem. You need a moving encounter off the triple threat. Catch. Right, palms to the pastor, right? Be ready before the ball comes. I said, Ray, give me a shooting tip. Ray said, ready, go. And that's it. He's like, man, this is my. When I catch it, ball on your feet there, I'm ready to go. You can jump stop guys. This is the Ray Allen drill. This is the basket. That's awesome. He didn't have cartoon characters or mats or cones on his head when he did that. And that's what. Was... Sorry, man. Sorry, Phil. Sorry. No. And then what's the fifth one? So you move off the catch, off the bounce, off the finish, off the screen, off the cut. And I did a horrible job of teaching this early on with my college team. But this is the game now. Players got to play off. So, okay, off the ball. I want one word. Maybe two words. Even though I got a master's, I don't know if it's two words or one. But. Close out! Off the ball, a little ambiguous, if, if you're around the team. Like, if you go to the highest level, man, you got great coaches that can just say a word. Short corner, dumb spot, patience. And the, and the kid has one word and he knows what that means. That's how you got to coach. Get reps at defining what closeout is and then, hey, man, let's read the closeouts. There's levels to this. Being around great players, LeBron, Steve, you remember Steve Francis? Yeah. J.R. Reed? Right? I had a chance to work with those guys, man. The details. You know who detailed the club and all that. He still came to the, to the, to the courts and balled out, but they were in the detail. Why, well, Coach, show me that again? They asked questions. And then here's the kicker. Who took my 20? Did I give it away already? Oh, huh? Yeah. My mom said I was ADD and SDUP. Yeah. What did I do with my 20? There you go. Team concepts. If, if you have confidence, see, you become more convicted. If you're clear and kids understand, they get addicted to learning. It's a little harder now. And Tyler might come up here and tell you, hey, kids need seven to one. Seven phrases, one negative. I mean, that's hard for me. But I, I'll change with that. But I, here's what I found out. You can kick a dude's butt if you can teach them how to like <laughs> You can get after him if you help him get up. Like, you can get after him if he knows, man, you love him, you give him solutions, you're taking his mind in place to where he wants to go. His mind and body to a place where he wants to go. It's hard to learn. It's easy not to learn. But I'm telling you, man, once kids learn, it's addictive. My little, my little nine-year-old hated basketball his whole life. And this year, he's starting to learn. Man, he wants to play more. Tony Robbins said, the way to true joy is what? Progress, grow, learn. And in our industry, we stay stuck. The great ones learn. That's why I love the fields here, and then the school spends some time with Tyler. Like, these great, they want right? to learn, right? I know who I am. If you tell me I'm wrong, that doesn't hurt my self esteem. I've got too many reps in. Well, because I'm not you. We get more reps. Who's the father of success? Grit. Two ways to get to the next level high level of intelligence, high level of grit. That's how you get to the next level. Five. Major parts of team concepts. You right there. You got a good haircut. There's five major <laughs> concepts to great team offense. And you use these, right, to go 2 on 0, 2 on 2, 3 on 0, 3 on 3, 5 on 0, 5 on 5. You're yelling these from the bench. But you got to teach. Once they do basics, once they master a moving encounter, now they got to learn how to play the game. Five team concepts. Go. Ball movement. And then how do you define it? Hey, you got three seconds to give it up, back it up, rip it, or shoot it. Real simple, right? 
Just fine, but good job. That's, that's one. I'll throw in a book, too. 20 in a book. You can buy a beer and breathe at the same time. Orange juice. I'll call my Yeah, player movement. Low to high, high to low. Very good. Awesome! Well, look at your body language. You're not still like, look, in, look at me and say, yo, coach, come on, man. Easy question. Player movement. Ball movement. Huh, huh, huh. How do you define player movement? I understand, but we're talking kids, man. They're at the height of their ignorance. Even the NBA guys. Young NBA guys, they're at the height of their stupidity, some of them. Right? They're young, they're coming in, they give, they're giving too much too early. Real ones expose the fake ones. Oh, you're in a real situation, you're in front of a real person, they want to expose your inadequacy. It doesn't make you inadequate or a mistake. But use mistakes as an education. Greatest thing I've ever heard is, hey, if there's nobody between you and the basket, but the basket. Hey, if there's nobody between, this is called a chase, right? You're up there. Move back up right there, right? When I hit him, it's called an uphill cut. Well, no, it's a handoff, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But not a dribble handoff. Just I'm here, I'm here, Jack. I'm coming. When you stay there, I'm trying to get. You know, he gets close. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be Duncan Robinson, man. I'm, I'm no contest. And you hand off, and you're moving, and I was a foul on him, and I get flying by the heat, man. But anyway, there's nobody between you and the basket. Cut to the basket. Nobody between you and the ball. Cut the ball. He can't explain to me who he is, what he does, what his convictions are, how to really, like, now do all the drills you want. Drills are great, but that's what you teach them. O, D, C. What does that stand for? Offense, defense, culture. That's Kelvin Sampson. When I'm on the plane, I'm not trolling anybody on Instagram. I'll do that in person. Maybe it came across like that. I'm just trying to educate you. Like, I don't think the mats are good. I don't like the mats. I'll say that. But every time you put a mat or a cone on the floor, you head goes down. I'm going to tell you this right now. Tweet it. I said it. I'll own it. When I die, I'll tell Jesus. you got to play with your head up. You can't play with your head down unless it's deception. What are four parts of driving? You drive with force. Teach kids how to drive with force. Teach kids how to change direction. Teach kids how to stop quick and start quick. Change the pace. What's the fourth part of driving? Everybody keep driving. No problem. That's the game now. But are you teaching it or are you doing drills? Deception! Make them think you're going left and go right. You know, Chris Paul, Chris Paul, <laughs> Right? Deception. You can use those four, I call it space givers. Off the cut, off the finish, screen. Last thing I'll leave you is because I got so much information, I'll probably forget it. I'm 51 almost, I have to mention it. How do you teach culture? And I'll be curious to see who that again. Here's what I've learned from training the best, the best, being around the best of the best. All of them have it. And there might be ten. I just teach five. Well, six. Number one, the best players, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a trainer, you're a coach, you're a leader, you got to work hard with purpose. you got to do it right. And then if you see somebody having a better way, oh, that's a better way, you got to be humble enough to say, all right, I'll, I'll change. It takes a man to change. It takes a woman to change. Number two, they're great teammates. Best experience of my life, Minnesota Lynx, they talk and touch all the time. You gotta teach these kids how to talk, you gotta teach these guys how to touch. If it's just you and them, you're, you're their teammate. Are they relating to you? They talk. If they don't talk to me, now I'm at this place in ones. I'll, I'll get you to talk to me. I still play my guys in ones. Why? To get them to be professional. Number three, they learn. They don't, they, don't, they don't forget. I give them my notes, I share my notes. I tell them to bring them back a notebook. Because when you write stuff down, you get what's inside of you out and alive. That's why I don't use a PowerPoint anymore live unless it's a keynote speech at university. I do it on Zoom, but it, like this, I mean, you got to write that stuff down. Because then you write it, you review it, you read it, you recite it, you repeat it, then you go teach it. Number four, Hall of Famers, winners, they compete, they don't complain, they camouflage weakness. They have trigger touches, trigger visions, trigger thoughts. I got you. They never take the blame. My bad. Most, no, I, I, next one. They don't complain. They get to the next play. Next play. Right? Snap method. Stop. Notice. But they don't complain. They, they are the example and excuse. They compete. They fight. Let's play again. No, coach, we're going to the coach. We're going back to the next. No, the five is the express. Right? When I work out kids, I allow them to express themselves. That's why this weekend, if I'm wrong, say I'm wrong. Carve me up. It helps me. Everybody tells me I do a good job. Well, now I know I'm not that good. I'm not that smart. Tell me what I need to get better at. 
But allow your players to express yourselves because you're not always right. Write that down. You're not always right, man. And it's okay not to be. It's okay to make a mistake. And then the last, what do you think the last one is? Culture. Work with a purpose, compete, don't complain, be a great teammate, talk and touch, have the aptitude to remember and learn. Who's the fifth one? Fun! Joy! You gotta allow these kids to have fun. You gotta make it fun. Like, that's culture. You gotta be able to explain that, own that. That's what you do. You do that, then you go to any country you want. You teach kids how to win. If they don't win, no problem. Because I'm teaching you how to act like a winner. Now you go into life and you have stable relationships and you change your community. Good night, God bless. Whatever.